Imagine waking up and realizing the most dangerous fat in your body isn't the stuff you can grab. It's the fat you can't see, sitting deep in your belly, and it's been quietly running the show. Visceral fat is usually under 10% of your total fat, yet it's the kind doctors worry about most because it doesn't just sit there, it keeps poking your hormones and blood sugar behind your back. Here's the scary part. The day it finally starts to let go, you probably won't see it on the scale, and you definitely won't see it in the mirror. But you might feel it, like your hunger changes, your energy shifts, or that heavy, puffy feeling starts to loosen. And if you don't know what those early signs mean, you'll quit right before the real transformation even shows up. For a long time, visceral fat does damage in silence. Your labs drift, your energy gets weird, and you blame stress or age. Clinically, it drives insulin resistance and chronic low-grade inflammation, the kind that slowly wears down your liver, arteries, and metabolism. It's like that bad roommate again, never loud enough to notice, but always messing with the thermostat in the bills. You might feel stubborn belly bloat, cravings that don't make sense, afternoon crashes, or brain fog you can't shake. In the next few minutes, I'll show you what changes first in the early days when this fat starts letting go and why those short-term shifts can be the start of something much bigger. First 24 hours, this isn't the flat belly chapter yet. This is the moment your body stops treating visceral fat like a protected savings account. When you tighten the inputs, less liquid sugar, fewer late-night bites, a real dinner, not dinner plus a second secret dinner, insulin starts to drop. Insulin is basically the lock on the storage unit. As it loosens, stress messenger hormones like norepinephrine can finally tap fat cells and say, we're withdrawing. In real life, this phase feels rude. Hunger spikes, your patience gets shorter, and you may feel oddly wired because your body is switching from easy fuel to stored fuel. Value. Don't quit just because it feels inconvenient. Metabolic change starts before you look different. Days 2 to 3, visceral fat begins to let go in the least dramatic way possible through chemistry. Visceral fat is metabolically active and releases free fatty acids into the portal circulation, which is basically an express lane straight to your liver. Reviews on visceral fat and fatty liver disease describe how this constant flow can overwhelm the liver's capacity and drive metabolic trouble. Think of the liver like a shipping warehouse. When visceral fat opens the floodgates, the warehouse gets deliveries first, every time. On the outside, you may look the same. On the inside, you might notice smaller, more practical wins. Less heavy after meals, fewer snacky thoughts, and energy that doesn't crash as hard mid-afternoon. Value. Track the quiet receipts. Hunger rhythm, energy, bloating. Because visceral fat rarely announces itself with a scale victory. Is 4 to 7, your liver takes the first shockwave, and then it adapts. Early on, incoming fat is like a factory getting slammed with boxes at 4.59 p.m. Chaos, paperwork, and somebody threatening to quit. But with repeated signals, a consistent calorie deficit, a daily walk, fewer ultra-processed snacks, better sleep, the liver ramps up fat oxidation and gets better at processing fuel. Meanwhile, the inflammatory noise starts to turn down because visceral fat isn't quiet fat. It behaves like an endocrine organ. Scientific reviews on obesity, adipose inflammation describe how cytokines like TNFA, IL-6, IL-1B, and chemokines like MCP-1 recruit immune cells into fat tissue, keeping the body in low-grade smoke alarm mode. As visceral fat shrinks, that alarm can soften. You might not feel it as inflammation dropping, but you may feel fewer aches, better recovery, or more stable mood. Value. One solid week can make your body feel easier to live in even before the mirror catches up. Weeks two to three, the bad roommate starts packing boxes. As visceral fat shrinks, the chemical spam it sends out eases and helpful signals become louder. Adiponectin, often described as a protective adipokine, supports insulin sensitivity and fat oxidation, and multiple reviews note that lower adiponectin is linked to worse metabolic health. Prospective research has even found that low adiponectin can predict future increases in visceral fat and insulin resistance, which is a brutal way of saying the wrong internal signals can make the problem snowball.
in real life, this is where people say, my appetite feels normal again, or I'm not thinking about food all day, or I can go from lunch to dinner without acting like a feral raccoon. Value. When your signals normalize, discipline stops feeling like a daily wrestling match. Weeks three to six, now the domino effect reaches the fat you can actually see. You can't spot reduce belly fat on command, but you can reduce visceral fat meaningfully with boring consistency. A 2023 systematic review and meta-analysis in the British Journal of Sports Medicine examined dose-response effects of exercise and caloric restriction on visceral adiposity and found a clear pattern. Bigger weekly energy deficits generally produced bigger visceral fat reductions. Earlier systematic reviews, including a PLOS One meta-analysis, also concluded that exercise can reduce visceral fat even without caloric restriction, though the effect is stronger when the overall weekly deficit is real. This is when waistbands start telling the truth, pants fit differently, belts move a notch, and you feel less compressed sitting down. Value. Your waistline is often a better progress report than your scale, because visceral fat changes can show up as shape before weight. Months two to three and beyond, this is where letting go becomes protection. In the two-year pounds loss trial, people assigned to different reduced calorie diets reduced abdominal fat, including visceral and hepatic fat. Without one magical macro split winning, adherence and sustained energy reduction mattered most. More recent MRI studies comparing intermittent versus continuous energy restriction and time-restricted eating schedules show that visceral fat can be tracked directly and can improve alongside cardiometabolic markers when the approach is consistent. The big long-term wins are boring but life-changing, improved insulin sensitivity, less liver fat burden, and calmer vascular signaling your body becomes more fuel-lexible again, switching between carbs and fat without panic, so cravings shrink and energy gets steadier. Value. The goal isn't to punish your body into losing fat, it's to create conditions where visceral fat doesn't want to move back in. Quick reality check. As fat tissue shrinks, it can release fat-soluble compounds it's been storing. Reviews on Persistent Organic Pollutants POPs, note that rapid weight loss can raise some of these in the bloodstream. Not a reason to fear it, just a reason to skip crash diets. Value, steady progress is safer progress, too. That's what happens when visceral fat begins to let go. It doesn't just change your waistline, it changes your signals. Your hunger gets quieter, your energy gets steadier. Your liver stops carrying the heaviest load in silence, and your body finally shifts from storage mode to repair mode. So don't wait for the mirror to approve your effort. Start stacking the habits that force this switch. Sleep, movement, real food, and fewer liquid calories. If you felt any of these early signs before, drop a comment and tell me which one hit you first. And if you want the next video on how to trigger visceral fat loss faster without wrecking your metabolism, hit like, subscribe, and share this with one person who needs it.